Hey there guys and welcome back. On this week's show, a simple shooting board. Well, a shooting board is a useful and essential jig that you use in conjunction with your hand planes. And it gives you the ability to square off the ends of your stock. When cutting stock by hand using hand tools, or even when you're using your table saw, sometimes they can be a little out of square and a shooting board tunes up those cross cuts as well as your long grain cuts so that you get that perfect, clean, crisp, sharp edge. Um, what we're going to be working on today is just a simple shooting board for 90 degree cuts um, on the cross grain. Well, in order to make a shooting board, you need to start with a solid base. And what I have here is a piece of plywood and I've cut it 12 inches wide by 16 inches long. Now I want this shooting board to be able to be used with different planes. So I have here my four plane, which I would like to use on it as well as my block plane. So you want to make the board long enough to accommodate your largest plane and you want to make it as long as or just about as long as your plane is. So in this case I've made the 16 inch shooting board to accommodate the 18 inch long sole. Well the next piece that you're going to need is going to be a sub base or a work support and for that I have a piece of half inch ply that has been cut to the same dimension of 16 inches long, but it is only 10 inches wide, leaving a two inch kind of platform here for your plane to run on. So there's really only two more pieces to cut, but then we have some more to do to these two pieces. So the last two pieces that we're going to need are going to be a stop here, and we also need a fence. So for the fence, you want a nice straight piece. The size of it doesn't really matter as far as how wide it is. It's whatever you're comfortable with. But I'm gonna make it out of three quarter inch ply, the same that we did the base. We're gonna have it 10 inches long, and I don't know, I'm gonna say maybe an inch and a half wide. We really don't need to go crazy on that piece. And we're gonna cut the same for our stop down here, three quarter inch ply, probably about an inch wide, inch and a half wide, and we're gonna have that one to be 12 inches long, the same as our base piece. Well, we have our fence cut, and now we have our stop cut as well. And before we start the assembly, there's something that we need to do to our sub base or our work support. And what I'd like to do, and not everybody does this, but this is just my preference, is along the top edge right here, I want to run the table saw blade along there to cut a tiny rabbit. And I mean a tiny rabbit, maybe a 16th of an inch, leaving at the bottom here about 3 sixteenths to a quarter of an inch material. And what that is for is it gives a platform for the offset of our blade to run on. And the offset of our blade, what I'm referring to is the distance between the shoulder of the sole right here and where your blade starts. It's generally about a quarter of an inch. So what I would like to do is have that little rabbit just so that it gives somewhere for this part of the sole to ride on without blade interference. So hopefully you can see that there, the rabbit that I have cut. It's just a tiny little thing, about a sixteenth of an inch wide. And like I said, that'll give somewhere for the offset of that blade to register against as you're using the jig. So now that you have this done, the next thing that we want to do is we want to line up our pieces so that we can mark for our next little process. So what I'm going to do here is I'm lining up my pieces very carefully and I want to mark right where that sub base or our work support contacts our main base. 
just like that. We're just gonna mark that off so we know exactly where it is. And the next step is I wanna take this over to the table saw and I'm gonna cut about, it's approximate, about a 3 16 inch wide by 3 16 inch deep dado all the way along there on the outside of this line. And what that is for is for um, sawdust removal, basically, so that any of your sawdust or finer little tiny shavings that might come off of end grain don't end up between the sole of the plane and the registry mark and cause or the edge of your sub base and cause your registry to be off so that your plane is now now out of skew sort of thing. So let's take this over to the table saw and cut that 3 16 inch wide dado. So now it's time for the assembly. And what we want to do is take our sub base or work support and we're going to take it and place it here so that the bottom lines up all the way around and the edge of that little lip there from our rabbit lines up with the edge of the dado that we just cut. Once we get that in place, I think what I'd like to do is glue it down. And I thought about screws. I'm not sure if I'm going to go that road. Um, I could always add them later, but for now, I'm just going to glue this and clamp it together and let it dry up. You want to be careful when you apply the glue not to get too close to that edge of the dado there because we don't want squeeze out to go down inside of it. Well, truth be told, I'm not really liking the way this is holding together with just glue. So I'm going to add screws. Make sure that if you're going to do that, that you countersink them so it doesn't interfere with your workpiece. Well, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to mount our stop or our cleat. And for that, we need it on the front edge, so the edge closest to the user. I've drilled and countersunk five holes evenly spaced. We're going to apply some glue, clamp this in place right here, flush with the end and flush on the left and the right side. And once we get that done, we're going to clamp it and then screw it and glue it into place. Well, the next step and the last step in the um, assembly is getting our fence in place. So this is the part where all of your other pieces register to. And once again, I've drilled five evenly spaced holes to help us secure it. Now it's a personal thing here where you want the fence. I see some guys up here way at the top. I see other guys right in the middle. For me, I like to be about, oh, a quarter of the way down. And what that allows you to do is as the plane is going over and cutting your piece, as the blade passes the fence, it still provides support on the back end. Some of the guys that have the fence a little further up to the top, as they go over, they could have this dipping problem. And that's extremely exaggerated, but you get what I mean. So what you're going to do is you're going to line this fence up about a quarter of the distance down or up here if you want or in here wherever you like it's your fence but you're going to line it up with the base here the registration mark where your plane is going to run and you want to make sure that it is absolutely 100 percent square on your entire assembly so use a trusted square 
line it up with the edge of that that mark there and square it up and glue it and screw it in place. So you can see that I'm using the sole of my plane as the registration for it and I'm also using a square against the sole of that plane so that I know that it's perfectly square. <laughs> Well, we lined it all up and I'll just show you here. We are absolutely perfectly square to the sole of that plane as it rides on those registration marks. The problem is, is that our fence protrudes just a little bit too much. So we're just going to take our plane and just run it along. Uh, there you go. It's already done. We've just skimmed off just a touch. You can see these tiny little curls. It was just one little piece. And we'll just double check that now. Line it up against the registration. And yes, sir, we are dead square. So that, my friends, other than a good sanding, is your shooting board done. So the question is, how do you use it? Okay, let's say that this is the square line that you wish to cut. Okay, and we'll just transfer that over to the top edge here. And let's just say that you're really terrible with a handsaw. So we'll cut this piece as if we're terrible with a handsaw. So not only have I cut this drastically out of square, but I have also cut it drastically crooked on this side as well. So this is where the shooting board comes in. You just lay your piece up against your fence, place your plane in its registration board, and with just light pressure in with your thumb against your plane, you're going to start moving it back and forth, just like this. Can you hear that taking little mix of wood off of there? And you can see the little pieces that it's taking off and it's slowly trimming down this end to be square and true to the end of this maple board. Now I'm there to the line, but there's a little extra there where I screwed up even further with the handsaw. No trouble. Again, just run it through. Like that. Put this aside and now we can check it. And my friends, it doesn't get more square than that. On both planes, it is right on the money. That is just beautiful. Well, what if you don't have a big plane like this and all you have is a block plane? I'm gonna show you that too. Well, I've taken our same maple board and made an equally poor cut as what I did before. And let me just show you here with the four plane. As you're running the four plane through, you have a lot of support as you pass by the fence and by your work material. Right now our blade is up here beyond the fence. The sole is still supported. That makes it a little easier to use a plane of that size on a shooting board, but there's no reason that you cannot use your block plane. The only thing you want to be careful of is when you're following through with that cut, 
don't go too far because you'll end up jamming on your way by. So you want to do shorter movements of your plane. So let's use the jack or sorry, the block plane here and get this trued up. And we are pretty much right on there. Not up to our line just yet, but still square. You can see that it takes just a little more effort with the block plane as it's a little short, choppy movements. And I had to keep adjusting my blade, which didn't help. But we'll bring in our four plane and bring it down to its normal dimension here. And there we are right up to the line and you can see how much easier it is with the four plane and that's just due to its girth and the fact that it's much easier to handle the larger unit and there you have it a shooting board guys a shooting board as you've seen throughout this video is such a simple thing to make but it is such an essential jig in the shop if you plan on doing any kind of hand uh, woodworking or hand done woodworking and utilizing hand planes. It really gives you the opportunity to bring yourself to the level of the table saw where that table saw cuts everything perfectly square as long as you have it set up correctly and everything is right on the money and everything looks so crisp. Well, now you have that ability to get that crisp edge as well by doing it by hand. So it's an awesome jig to have. If you should have it where your fence starts to wear and you're having problems that it's no longer supporting the back end and you're having blowout from your planer or from your plane, you can cut a little chamfer on one end before you start to plane, then turn the thing around and then run it through as normal, just like creeping up on that uh, chamfer. And once the chamfer is gone, you should have a clean supported edge. So, I don't know. Guys, I really hope you're gonna try to make this jig for yourself. Feel free to modify it, feel free to change it up. Um, I'm thinking of making another one on an upcoming show that might have some UHMW plastic for the tool rest where it's a lot easier to glide. Maybe try some wax on that surface so that your plane slides a little easier. Guys, if you haven't already, please don't forget to like and subscribe and click the bell so that you don't miss the notifications of future episodes of the show. I really want to thank you for tuning in and I hope you're going to join me again next week when I bring you yet another woodworking video.